After giving thanks for a bountiful summer, it's time to start preparing for winter. One of the things I like to do to prepare my garden for next year is to clean out the chicken and duck coop. Hey, uh, wasp nest above your head. Yeah. By putting them in the garden, they feed those microorganisms and that breaks down into nutrients for the plants for the garden next year. We lay down new bedding since yeah. the ducks and the chickens are going to be spending a lot more time inside the coop during the winter and it'll be nice and clean for them so we can start the process for next year. I make sure that the coop is as windproof as I can get it and weatherproof. All right, so this is this year's garlic and we've let it dry out. We're just gonna pick the biggest ones and you girls wanna take it apart like this into individual ones and make a little pile. We're gonna plant these now and then we'll cover them up with some thick mulch and then they'll grow into each one of these will be a clove itself. And so we'll have garlic for next year from the, the best parts of this year's garlic. And so we'll be able to cook with it, use it for drying and putting in recipes, canning, things like that. So now we just take these, push them in to the soil. You gotta make sure the, the stem part. Yes. Like yeah, the this? little yeah, the little thing there. You gotta make sure that's pointed up. Like this. Yeah, and space them out about the Ooh, width of your hand. It's pointed up. So it's like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Stick it right there. Okay. Like like that. Yeah. Okay. Grab it like this and shake a nice thick layer of that. And it'll keep it protected for the winter. And then next spring, they'll, we'll uncover it. We'll have little sprouts that have come up, little green shoots that have come up. Oh, yeah. And then by June or July, we'll have more garlic. We have to get a lot on everyone. Just fill it all the way up fluffy like that, all the way until it's like to the very top of the wooden box, okay. the raised bed. That would be, it would be like an insulator. You know what insulation is? Like in the house, it yeah. keeps things warm and keeps yeah. things cool in the like, summer. It's gonna help protect it all winter long. No. Just as long as you fluff it up, okay? Try to get most of my maintenance, things like oil changes, fuel filter changes, things like that out of the way in the fall before it gets too cold. There's nothing worse than trying to work on vehicles in the snow. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, I fixed something. That way, they'll be ready to go for the next spring. All right. So, we've got two liters, brand new. It's a really good idea to become familiar, to be as mechanical as you possibly can. You can save so much money by doing these things yourself. All right, so see how this tube runs up here? Your fuel goes through here and then to the next tube. So all you have to do is take a pair of pliers. You're gonna squeeze these and take them down the hose a little bit 
Then you're gonna do the same thing on that other side. And this should slide off. And then you're gonna put the new one, make sure it goes the right direction. They should have an arrow on there. I just dropped it, but yeah. So you just put that one where that one goes and you slide the hose back on. You take your pair of pliers and you pinch this and you slide it back up onto the plastic insert. And that's all there is to it, guys. So I've been growing gourds. gourds the last couple of years. A of They're a pretty good money make at the farmer's market. And we can use them for birdhouses to give away as gifts or sell on Etsy or whatever. Now, a lot of homesteaders don't discuss things like hunting a lot, but to me, it, it just makes logical sense to get a lot of your meat from hunting. Now, if you talk to a lot of modern day hunters, they're going to tell you that hunting is expensive because they most likely spend their money on the latest gear and the nicest things that you can get. If you're practical and you don't go overboard, the meat is actually cheap especially when you get resident tags. In our state of Missouri, deer tags are very plentiful, deer are very plentiful, and tags are very cheap. You can get a lot of meat for very little money. If you're like me, who use the same bow and arrows year after year, and the same rifle will last your lifetime, as well as your children's lifetime. You don't have to have anything fancy. And if you look at it this way, these animals and this meat is getting raised for free. They're eating wild foods, and you don't have to spend money and time on fixing fence to keep them in. And they're living their life as free animals. And to me, it doesn't get any better than that. If you raise a steer or a pig, you're going to be feeding that steer or pig, and you're going to be keeping that steer or pig in. You're going to have to continuously water it. Throughout the winter, you'll be breaking ice to make sure that it can have something to drink. With hunting, you go out, you do some scouting, you set up, and then you get your meat. To me, it's the most practical way to get meat on the homestead. This particular group of deer was breaking down my fence that was surrounding my fruit trees. A lot of the bucks were rubbing the trees and eating a lot of the vegetation on my fruit trees. So by controlling their population, I can control how badly my fruit trees are devastated by them, as well as get free meat. I swear, man, they can smell the blood, fresh blood. They're not gonna get, they're not gonna get it this time. This one's mine. <laughs> 